In this tutorial, we're going to talk about batch rendering in Octane Standalone, and why I think it's better than Cycles, Eevee, Unreal Engine, and more. Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. If you're new to the channel, I make videos about 3D and visual effects using software like Blender, Unreal, Octane, and more. This video is a part of an Octane Standalone playlist that I'm creating right now. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any content. Alright, let's get to it! Before we jump in, I want to give an overview of why I think Octane's batch rendering is really cool. So this is sort of the end of the tutorial video, but you can see that we have five different images here. These were all done in one batch. They all have different resolutions, so 1000 by 1000, 1920 by 1080, etc. They're all done with different render kernels, so this one is done with path tracing, this one is done with the photon kernel, this one's done with path tracing, this one I think was a direct kernel. They all have completely different camera settings, completely different imager settings. Some of them are denoised, some of them are not denoised, some of them have specific passes set up, and it doesn't matter, I can render them all with just one push of a button. So I think that Octane's batch rendering is very, very powerful, and I like it much better than Cycles or EV, etc. Okay, there are two main ways to batch render. I'm gonna show you them real quick, and then we'll talk about organizing and some other things. So if you go up here to Script, batch rendering. This brings up a menu and you can choose all of the render targets that are in your project. You can uncheck them and you can do some other things. We're going to look at these in more detail in a little bit. So the other one is a node. So if you right click on here, you can come up to render job and select batch render job, or you can press spacebar and search for batch render job. And this node, you can add as many render targets as you want and then you can just plug in your render targets right into this batch render job. And then if you click on batch render job, there are different settings you can change here. I have a note here, let's see, it says batch render job note is great if you have a lot of render targets and you want them to all be the same output. So what I mean by that is up here, you have these overrides, which you have in the script menu as well, but under image format, you can't change them per render target, it's all here. So depending on what you're doing, this might be a good thing. If you want all of your render targets to be exported at EXR 16-bit and you choose your color space, all that stuff, this can be great because if you do it through script batch rendering, you have to manually come through here and change them. With just five render targets, it's not a big deal, but if you had, let's say 50, it might be better just to do the batch render job node. So now that I've shown you the two ways to do it, let's first organize our scene. Because right now, if I went to batch render, I have no idea what render target two, three, four, five, and the regular one is. And these render targets are just the name of the render target. So if I click on this render target, this is this scene. If I click on this one, Let's see what this is. This is the USD scene. So I'm going to name my render targets and it's up to you what you what you name them. What you might wanna do is put RT for render target and then give it a name. So I'll call this one Teddy Bear. But for me, I'm just gonna call it by its scene. So I'm just gonna call this Teddy Bear. I'll call this three cubes. And then now if we go to batch render, we can see we have teddy bear, three cubes, and then the other ones. But let's talk about organizing the whole scene graph. So let's come here and let's do maximize. So now this is actually a very simple scene. If you're new to Octane Standalone, this may look very complex. It's actually not. But I'm going to go ahead and organize these. And there's a million different ways you could organize them. The way I'm going to organize this is I want to have just my scene nodes in this top graph. And then I want to be able to double click and then go into the scenes individually. So I want to have one node graph per scene, basically. First, going to just take this three cubes scene. So let me see what's going on here. This is all part of it for sure. This is part of it. This is just something I was playing with earlier, so I'm actually gonna delete these, I don't need them. So basically, my three cube scene is just this. I want this to all be one scene, and the way I can do that is if I left click and drag, I can select all of these nodes, and press right click, group items, and now it's called node graph by default. Let's give this a new name, pop out a full screen, and then up here in the node inspector, I can click on this and I can call this three cubes. Right now, if I click on this, nothing happens, but I want to be able to click on this and have it start rendering in the viewport. So the way I can do that is if I double click, I go into the node graph. Down here at the bottom, if I right click output and then go down to render target out and then connect these. The other way you can do this is just by pushing spacebar, render out, render target out. 
And now if I drag this onto here, and I go back to my main scene, you can see now I have an output pin here, and when I click on this, it starts rendering. I'm gonna do the same for this scene. I'm gonna double click on this. I'm gonna go down to the bottom. I'm going to rename this, spacebar, render, out. Come back to our scene, and now I click on this, it'll start rendering. Click on this, it will start rendering the cubes. Do the same here. Do the same over here. I'm gonna right click, group items. I will rename this scene, I'll just call this human. Now that we're at this part, what you can do is you can press this button right over here that rearranges the items in this graph to make it look tidier. And it lays them out just like that, which is cool. I can go ahead and delete this note, I don't need it. I'll press this again. Now you can see we have all five of our scenes and it becomes much easier to deal with these five different scenes from an organizational standpoint. And now if you want to use the batch rendering node, press spacebar, do a batch render job, you can just connect these right up to here and it just becomes a lot easier to work with. While we're talking about organizing, you can also press spacebar and search for note. So you can write yourself notes here. So I'm gonna say this is three cubes. And now we have notes here and you can stretch this out to make it bigger or smaller. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and rename these as well. So I'll call this caustics. Also, if you look over here, you can turn on this grid and you can turn on snapping to the grid. So depending on how OCD you are, this might be helpful. So just as an example, I'm gonna go through these scenes and I'm going to change the render target resolution to be completely unique so that each one of these render targets are completely different. All right, so now if we go to script, batch rendering, you can see we still have render target three, teddy bear two, three cubes two. So I wanna make sure these are labeled correctly because it's going to include this in our file names. So let me go back, change the name of render target three to gallery, change three cubes two to just three cubes, and teddy bear. So if we go back to batch rendering, you can see these are all labeled accordingly. And now let's look through some of these settings. So of course you can select just one if you want, or you can select a few of them, you can select all. You can change the format individually. For now, I never use PNG, but I'm gonna use PNG for this example because it'll be easy for us to preview. And then you can choose to override samples. So in general, I would not do this for batch rendering, but for this example, I will override the samples and just put it at two so we can quickly see it. If you hover over this file name template, you can see what these different codes do. So if you wanted to add, for instance, timestamp, you would just type in percentage T and that would add a timestamp to it. And then you can put an output folder and these are all self-explanatory as well. In general, I would save all enabled passes but for this example, I'm just gonna skip all that for now and you can choose your compression type. Once you've changed anything, let's say if I change this to 32-bit, when I come back to my batch rendering, it will remember that, so that's also very helpful. You only have to set it up once and then it will rem remember all of your, your settings per project. So let's go ahead and start the render. We can see it rendering in Octane. Down here at the bottom, if you wanted to cancel this, you could either go to Cancel or down here at the bottom left, you can do kill. Okay, and now it's finished. So you can see it has rendered out all of our images. You can see they have different dimensions. They're also using different kernels. The caustics is using the photon kernel. Teddy bear is using the direct kernel. Human beauty and these other ones are using path tracing kernel. They all have completely different settings for their render target, for their camera settings, etc. So I think you get a sense of why Octane's batch renderer is actually very, very powerful. I'm excited to explore this even further, and as I learn things, I will let you guys know. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you like this video, then you'll also like this one I did on network rendering in Octane Standalone. One of the coolest features is that it actually helps you speed up your viewport performance. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.